it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today I have some sweet little kiddos in the neighborhood who left me some amazing thank you notes about my YouTube channel so I'm gonna make them some simple and easy fairy gardens for the spring Okay, so I came home the other day and I had some sweet little thank you notes um, that were waiting for me from some of the kiddos in my neighborhood talking about how they like watching my YouTube channel and walking by the garden. And I was like, yeah, I needed that. that day. <laughs> so I thought I might do something fun in return for them. I'm going to create some simple uh, fairy gardens for them to um, play with immediately. And then I'm also going to be including a selection of easy growing cut flower seeds that they can start once our cold weather is done. Now it's four kiddos, um, four different households. So I needed to make multiple. So I wanted to be able to do this on a budget. So a bunch of the items I actually ended up purchasing from um, the Dollar Tree. So let me show you what I have. I ended up picking up these kind of plastic fake terracotta containers in their hanging baskets. And I don't really need the hanging, hanging basket aspect of it, but they come right off real easily. So what I'll end up doing is removing all of those so that I have just the container just like this. Now this does have places on the back side to be able to pop open so that we have drainage holes. And you definitely, for a fairy garden, you're definitely gonna wanna have a drainage hole. Let me go get my drill because I think I'm gonna need that. Okay, got my drill. Okay, easy peasy. Got those popped open and out so that we can have drainage. Even if you are gonna keep your fairy garden inside, you're still gonna wanna make sure that you have really good drainage. Um, because even inside stuff, with the, what we're gonna be putting in here, you wanna make sure you have some nice drainage. You can always put like a plastic plate or um, a water catch underneath them. These um, can go inside or outside depending on what works for best for these kiddos and their families. Okay, so I've made a lot of fairy gardens over the years. My oldest child, she's now 15, loved making uh, flower garlands when she was younger. She probably would still like enjoying, <laughs> enjoy making them now. She's just so busy with high school. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my containers. I'm gonna go ahead and fill them up with my favorite potting soil. I use the Burger BM7 potting soil. Okay, so I'm making the fairy garden as something that these kids can enjoy right now. I think that's really important for kiddos to see regarding plants. And then I'm also including seeds that they can plant after the last frost in our area, and then they can actually watch those grow up over time. If I were to give them just seeds right now, or just plant seeds in these containers, it would be a little bit hard for the kids right at the beginning, especially these are younger kids, um, to kind of capture their um, attention. So starting with some stuff that I've already, you know, already blooming works really well. Okay, so we're gonna start simply. I went to Walmart and they had a lot of already pre-sprouted um, bulbs going. So I picked up daffodils, tulips, hyacinth, and mascari. I tried to get ones that weren't blooming already. Um, these daffodil popped real quick as soon as I got home. But basically what I want to do is I really want to plant larger things towards the back of the container, shorter things towards the front. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these from their containers. And I probably have too much soil in here, but, and we'll go ahead and get these bulbs down in here towards the back. The tulips are a little bit larger as well. And if you wanted to, like this has multiple bulbs in it, you could break up these tulips if you wanted. With a fairy garden, you're trying to just like create this like really sweet little environment for the fairy. Oh my gosh, look at the roots on the hyacinth. That's insane. All 
All right, so see we've got the back kind of going like that, and then I've got the mascari last. And each of these in my area, each of these little containers was like $1.50 each. You don't have to put in as many as I'm doing. Okay. All right, so we've got those in. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm kinda, kinda come through and compact the soil some. And it looks like I have a little too much soil. So I'm gonna pull that out. Okay, simple and easy. That looks really sweet. So how do we make this a fairy garden? We obviously need a fairy in it. So I have selected some things from the Dollar Tree. It's a good place to get things that have fairies. So um, fairy garden stuff. You can order online, dollartree.com as well. You can also purchase stuff from, oh, I need to re-glue this one. It's from the Dollar Tree, so obviously really inexpensive. You can purchase stuff um, from Amazon. Um, in my area, they also have a whole bunch at oh, Green Acres, tons of stuff at Green Acres. So let's go ahead and we'll pull out a sweet fairy so that we can kind of figure out where we want to place our fairy. So typically we're going to nestle the fairy in here around this area. We also have a little house. So I got a little house. These are also from the Dollar Tree for each of the kiddos. So I'm going to go ahead and nestle that in first. And then also from the Dollar Tree, I picked up a bag of decorative rocks. And these are already fun to do. You don't think that they're necessary, but then when you see how much they change the look, once you start putting them in, it's pretty fabulous. So I got one bag per garden. And then I can also pack these down a little bit to help secure the soil. All right, and then I've got my sweet little fairy coming in here. And I'm gonna give you guys a close up when I do the next one. Each of these is slightly different. And I've got some additional toadstools or little mushrooms. There we go. Okay, so super simple, super inexpensive, a great way to catch the attention of a young child. My daughter, when we had fairy gardens, she used to write notes to her family, her, her fairy. Her fairy's name was Azul, and she would write notes to Azul, and um, Azul would write notes back, and she loved it. And Azul always left her notes in the garden, in the fairy garden, and Azul always wrote really tiny on little bitty pieces of paper um, for my daughter Ivy, and she loved it. There's something really magical about a fairy garden. It's really kind of sticks in my, um, like Ivy's memory. I know she's going to remember that for years to come and definitely going to do something like that for her own kids. So let's go ahead and put together the additional fairy gardens.
am obsessed with these little colored containers that all the bulbs came in. I'm gonna save these and use these for another project. Okay, I love how these turned out. Now this one right here, I have in a bowl with water, so I'm bottom watering it right now. And I'm gonna do that with each of them before I go deliver it to the kiddos. I think these are just enough. They're not too much and over the top easy for the parents to care for. The kids will get to watch that now they know some of the daffodils are blooming. So now they know that flowers are blooming, but they'll get to see the muscari, the hyacinth, and the tulips bloom as well and get to watch through that whole process. And then once all these bulbs have finished blooming, if their parents and then want to go in and plant some additional bedding plants or something like that, they can totally do that and keep it going with these designs if they choose to. But yeah, a very fun, inexpensive way to start a fairy garden. Garden. I've made quite a bit of elaborate fairy gardens in the past that cost quite a bit of money. And so um, not everybody wants to do that, right? And this is just a really great gift. I mean, I would say I have $15 to $20 in each of these, if that, only because my bulbs were a little bit more expensive. Had I started my own bulbs inside earlier, that would have worked way better. Um, but you know, you can just pick them up from the store already ready to go at this point, which is kind of fun too. You obviously don't have to do the spring bulbs. You can do petunias or alyssum or dianthus. You can do some other types of flowers in these. These can be kept inside. These bulbs are ready to go. They'll bloom inside very quickly. The kiddos can also keep them outside, especially with these spring bulbs. They'll actually do fine with colder temps. Should you get significantly below freezing, uh, freezing temps, you want to go ahead and bring these inside just so that they don't get killed off. Um, you also want to make sure that they're well watered in any time the temps are getting colder. Um, because of the nature of these containers and they're smaller, they probably need to be watered every other day. I'm bottom watering um, and I'll probably tell the parents about bottom watering. But because we do have the gravel on top, that will help a little bit with the watering from the top if the kids want to water with a watering can or something like that. Okay, so let's talk about the next part um, of this. So I'm gonna bring them the little fairy gardens. I think will just be really fun and delightful. And then in addition, I wanted to provide seeds for them to be able to start growing some of their own um, flowers at home. Now, uh, the Dollar Tree has a really great selection of seeds. And so I think I got enough for every kid to have five packs of seeds. I could be wrong, let me look at this. Okay, I did get five packs of seeds per kid. I did not get all of them from the Dollar Tree. The ones I did get from the Dollar Tree, the first one is a mammoth Russian sunflower. The um, seeds at Dollar Tree are four for a dollar. And I thought these were really fun because these will be giant ones that'll be like 12 feet tall if the kids want to plant those. Those are very unusual and fun and whimsical for kiddos. I also picked up the semi-dwarf zinnias and these are much shorter at 18 to 24 inches. These grow pretty quick, which is really, really nice, but um, those will be fun. I picked up an additional set called Lilliput Mixed Zinnias. These are about 16 to 18 inches um, tall, so a little bit shorter as well. I also picked up a shorter sunflower. This one's called Dwarf Sunspot. These are about 24 inches tall. And then I also picked up a set of Cosmos Sensation Picotty. These are about 48 inches tall. I picked up all seeds that they can direct sow outside. I, I am in no way assuming that the parents have a setup like what I have. So if you're giving to a kid or a family who doesn't do a lot of gardening, definitely pick seeds that can be absolutely direct sowed that don't have to be like fussed over anything like that. This, um, all of these flowers do pretty well with our heat. And basically what I'll end up doing, I think I'm gonna like package them with a sweet little ribbon and put a note on there saying not to plant until after March 15th. Okay, I'm gonna include five little tags with each set. I'm not gonna go ahead and pre-write because it would be good for the kiddos to do the writing themselves. So five little tags. And then I've got a little bit of like burlap ribbon. Okay, so I've got my little packet of seeds, plant after March 15th. 
and that'll work really good. Okay, these turned out super sweet too. So these are even just a great gift in and of itself. Make sure, like I said before, you're choosing seeds that are easy to start, easy to grow. We don't want anything that needs cold stratification and this like whole process. Something simple, sunflowers, zinnia, cosmos, celosia, things along those lines work really, really well. But this is just a really fun gift if you have a kiddo in your life um, who might have some interest in gardening. This is a really fun way to approach as well. Now, what I'll be doing is I'm also going to, I think I'm going to hand write a um, letter to each of the kiddos because I mean, they that's what they did is they hand wrote these little letters and decorated them with flowers and glitter and googly eyes is really great. And then I'll walk them over to each of the kiddos houses and um, the little setup with the card and everything. Make sure that the parents, you know, I might write some of the instructions for the care of the fairy gardens in the note to help the parents out. This can be overwhelming for some parents who are not into gardening. I happen to know that these three kiddos live in houses where their parents take care of the front yard and the front garden. So I think that this is not gonna be an issue for them at all. But what a fun way to start um, this spring. <sighs> You know, I always talk about you guys when you leave comments, it brings me a lot of joy and peace. And I'm not gonna lie, when I saw those little notes sitting on my front, <laughs> on my, at my front door, I almost teared up because uh, yeah, it made me really happy. I don't make these um, videos for children at all, but it is pretty cool that some kiddos are watching and maybe they'll be inspired. I know certainly that all my gardening will be a huge memory for my children. So they will remember mommy's garden and mommy's flowers for years to come. So I hope that you have kiddos in your life or people in your life that you can share gardening with as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed these sweet little inexpensive, simple fairy gardens and the little seed packets that we created today. As always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have ever started a fairy garden before or if you have a sweet kiddo that you think would really enjoy one of these little fairy gardens. And make sure you check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.